happened during the period of the First World War when George Swinburne was so heavily preoccupied in, in other areas? Well, it was a cooperation of the uh, council and the directors of the staff. He certainly kept up his interest and was able to attend and keep in touch. But of course his work for the Defence Department on the Business Board and the uh, work for the Federal Government as uh, control of capital uh, did take him travelling interstate considerably and was very, very demanding. But then everyone was the same. I mean, everyone had uh, extraordinary demands upon him during the war. And uh, I think pe people rose to it and uh, filled in and did the extra work. And then soon after the uh, Soon after the end of the war, he stood for the Senate once and was defeated for Victoria, but he was invited to join the State Electricity Commission under Sir John Monash and with Sir, Tom, Sir Thomas Gibson. And um, it, was, it was under that committee that the whole Huron project for brown coal was started. But that was uh, after the war had ceased. But uh, he, were, he was often engaged in uh, big projects and appointments that made it necessary to travel interstate. But you see, you see, the college was a community cooperation and there were fine people there and they carried on. And that continues today. <laughs> I believe that your mother, Mrs. Ethel Swinburne, was a very important figure also in the um, the setting up, the establishment oh, oh, of yes. the college. Can oh, you tell yes. us something about her role in all this? Oh, well, it's only that she, uh, she supported everything that was done and wanted to join in. And it was a combined, uh, a combined enterprise for, or in many ways. But she particularly was behind the domestic economy and the girls' junior school. And uh, uh, she, uh, and she used to like, uh, we had, uh, uh, we had a chance of meeting the girls. We invited the girls up to play tennis on our tennis court sometimes and rather take them inside and show them some interesting things. But it, was, it didn't last very long because she being the only school for so far, the girls were so scattered, they really didn't have much time after school. But she certainly promoted things like them having a better playground and a, hall, and a better hall and everything. In fact, the hall built for the girls' junior school was the only assembly hall in the college for a long time. And to this day, members of both the Swinburne and the Hamer family have mm -hmm. taken a very uh, important role in uh, representation on the college council. Oh, yes. Uh, the, present, the current president, yes. uh, Mr. Brian Martin, is yes. in fact a member of the, the Swinburne Hamer. Family. Oh yes, Mr. Brian Martin is my nephew, my eldest sister's eldest son, and <coughs> and his his takes a great interest in it mm -hmm. and does a great deal for it too. From our discussion about the formal involvement of the Swinburne family in the setting up and development of the college, we moved on to talk about Miss Swinburne's own life and activities, and her continuing interest in Swinburne College. We've seen how the Swinburne and Hamer families have been associated with Swinburne College through representation on the Swinburne College Council. But you yourself, Miss Swinburne, have had a long active involvement with the college as well. In fact, you were, for a temporary period, a teacher at the junior school. Yeah. Could you tell us something yeah. about that? Oh, well, yes, at the girls' junior school, when it just started, it was so completely new that everything had to be worked out. Uh, to make the difference between the, the girls' technical school and other schools, and yet continue the general education. And uh, there was, it was wartime and they were short of teachers, and I took the special subject of, um, of civics. It was a new subject and a new book and a new teacher, and um, however we got somewhere and we went on a visit to Parliament House. And I just did that part-time for the first year, and I took arithmetic and economics part-time. The next year, I had the great privilege of meeting Miss Derham as she was, Miss Anderson as she was then, now Miss 
Mrs. Frances Derham, who has been one of the greatest innovators in teaching young people's arts that we have ever had, and in using art for uh, art for education. And it was a very interesting experience. And Miss Blackmore from England adapted to the school wonderfully, and um, she really made it uh, a model for for bringing girls into the junior technical field at all. Mm -hmm. she was, we had a great success. She, was, she had all new teachers, as I say. It was a great... We got on that. And your association with Swinburne College, or another aspect of your association, was of a more informal nature uh, at, at the garden parties. Oh, yes. Can you tell us why these were instituted and uh, if you have any stories about them? Oh, well, all the families that were available was interested in the, what went on, but of course the, the war happened and then we were travelled. But really, after my father's death in 1928, Sir William McPherson became president, and then unfortunately he lived only for a little while. We had a succession of gentlemen as president just for short term. And uh, uh, when Mr. Gray, who was also had been mayor of Hawthorne and was in LA, my mother thought it would be a very suitable and pleasant if we had an opportunity for all the staff to meet together and to meet the new president. And so we, we had a garden party at our home at Shenton Kincora Road. We had a lawn and a tennis court and some room. And so we started an annual garden party. And it was a very pleasant occasion indeed. We had a good caterer. And the only, uh, uh, the only little uh, hits that I remember was when one president wanted to make speeches. And uh, my mother didn't want to have any speeches. So we had an argument about whether we should have speeches, but we didn't. We had children. We had, uh, and um, the garden parties went on, I think, until the second year before my mother's death. So probably, 1958, I think. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a lovely annual event. And it sounds as they continue the tradition of Swinburne College, more or less being part of a family. Oh, yes. Community. And family. although um, my sister's married and went to different parts, the one in England, the Yarrawonga, and my cousins too, anybody that was available came, they all, and quite often it was, a, it was an event and a visit from abroad. It was very interesting.